And welcome to the 2015 Stonington Gift here at the home of the True Blues, the Paran Career Club at Turak Park in Melbourne. Of course, into its fifth year, the Stonington Gift is one of the, the premier running events in Australia with a total prize purse of 15000 for both the men and the women. We are here on a beautiful Friday evening. And we're joined by the 2014 Stall Gift winner, Luke Versace. Luke, good evening. Hey, how's it going, mate? I'm very well. Now, last year's Stall Gift winner, can you tell us about the lead up to the race? Because it was the closest finish in, a, in the 133 year history of the Stall Gift. Uh, that's right. I was uh, pretty fortunate to salute in the end. But um, yeah, it was a really big year for me. I completely dedicated myself to having a genuine crack at winning it and uh, used Donington along the way to really try to find some form. I turned up here 12 months ago and uh, I was a fair way off them. But fortunately, between now and Stool, I uh, found the metres that I needed. Now, of course, we're in February at the moment, and with the stall gifted during the Easter weekend, is it a really good lead-up race for all the athletes? Oh, this is a genuine lead-up race for anyone interested in stall. Basically, there's probably about four or five races throughout the year where guys are genuinely having a go, where everyone is having a go, and that's usually because of the prestige of the race and the prize money, and Stoddington has both of those two things. So tonight, you can come out here, and everyone out there is having a really, really big dip, and so you can see exactly where you are and how far you're off, and that's what happened for me. And of course, if you can see us in the background, it's a wonderful turnout from the local people living in Turak and Paran. We've also got athletes coming across Australia for a total prize purse of 15000 with 10000 to the overall men and women winner. Now, Luke, off air, you were telling me about a little bit of an accident when you were 19 overseas. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how it affected your training into your 20s? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, you, we were talking about knee injuries, and you've obviously had a few. But um, yeah, when I was 19, I went running with the Bulls, and uh, unfortunately, wasn't quick enough to outrun of them, outrun one of them, and um, yeah, gave me a really, really good learning, and yeah, left a couple of holes in my leg. So that set my athletics career back a fair way. But um, ultimately, it was. I wouldn't have won the Stall Gift without it because it was there that I decided that I genuinely wanted to win the Stall Gift. So, so in terms about learning about perseverance and overcoming injuries, that's something you think most athletes, if they uh, tend to succeed, that's that's a stepping stone for them. Oh, look, I'm sure that everyone's got their own journey, but I know for me it was just vitally important. I basically felt like I owed my parents. Like, they uh, had to spend a lot of money. I put them through hell emotionally, and I genuinely felt indebted to them. So I always thought that if I could win the Stall Gift, it would be a nice way to be able to say, thanks for everything you've done for me, and that's what it was. Now, in terms of the Stall Gift and the Stonington Gift tonight, it is run over grass. How do you find the difference between running on grass and running on an athletics track? Uh, look, they're very, very different experiences. When you run on a rubber track, you get a lot of bounce and you run a fair bit quicker, you're probably about a metre or two quicker over the 100. Um, for me personally, I found running on rubber really taxing on my body, especially as I got older. And um, by the end last year, I couldn't run on rubber at all because my Achilles was so sore. So uh, this is a beautiful track, though. Like This has got to be one of the best tracks in Australia, let alone Victoria. Yeah, well, the, the Pran Cricketers are very privileged to play at Turak Park, which is one of the better grounds going around in Premier Cricket. And you can see behind us, it's a wonderful track. It's a, it's a great setup. And but Luke, can you tell us a little bit about what you do right now and what have you gone on to since winning the Stall Gift? Uh, yep, um, I'm currently. I've just had a child four months ago. My work, my wife's returned to work. Um, so I'm basically staying at home and looking after the kid full time. Uh, last year I was working as a relief teacher so I could train. Um, I'll be returning to law and practicing as a lawyer um, in the next few months. But as of right now, but I sit at home and I look after a kid. So it was very nice to come out tonight and have a few beers with the boys. And no doubt just reward for a fair amount of effort in the last couple of years. Oh, that was uh, a silly amount of effort to get me over the line. I had to come from a fair way back. But uh, look, I'm, I'm enjoying walking around tonight, having a few beers and catching up with people and shaking some hands. And we're now joined by Cara Bosted. Cara, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Now, fresh off the track, you've just won your semi-final. Um, I have, yes. It was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> now, of course, we're going to have to boot you off very shortly because your final's at about 10 past 10 this evening. Uh, how are you feeling and how you, what are your chances are like in the final? I'm um, feeling a little bit nervous. Um, at the same time, I, th I thought I'd run a decent heat in semi, so fingers crossed there might be a podium finish, but I think I'll be very lucky to make that. So we'll see. Now, is this your first Stonington gift? Uh, no, this is probably about my fourth year doing the Stonington gift, but this is my second time in the gift. Um, first time in a final day, so. And so why the Stonington gift? Can you, you tell the viewers out there, you know, what, what draws you to Turak Park uh, on a sunny f uh, February night? Um, it's just, it's, I don't know, magical atmosphere, but the grass is immaculate. 
It's up there with stall. The race itself is up there with stall as well. Prize money, of course. Um, up until just recently, it's, it was the best women's prize purse in a while. So I'm here. Now, of course, the men and women both share a $15,000 purse this evening. So is it, there's enough up for grabs. Uh, now, where does the Stonington gift stand in terms of the other races in your schedule? Um, right now, it's it's probably equal with stall. Um, again, just because of the atmosphere and because of the prize purse. But um, I don't know. I'm a little bit torn now between Stonington and stall. So, very excited. Now, of course, you're a primary school teacher trained. I am. The kids give you some words of wisdom this morning. Um. Yeah. Look, high fives. High five my mum because she's down. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, kids are always full of enthusiastic. Just before we kick you back out into, so you can warm up for the final, was there anyone you'd like to thank uh, in particular? Um, I'd like to thank my coach, David. He's my best friend. Um, he's there all the time for me, thick and thin. So big thank you to Dave. Thank you also to my mum, who's down from North Queensland as well. Fantastic, and all the best for the final. Thank you very much. We're joined by Paul Young, and of course, a very familiar face amongst the crowd here at Turak Park and the Stonington Gift for 2015. Welcome, Paul, and thanks for joining us. Yep, no worries. Glad to be along. Now, just talking off air, you, you gave me a little bit of brief history about the athletes that you've brought over from South Australia, but can you give uh, the audience a bit of a taste of who's here tonight and, and what sort of work you've been doing leading up to tonight's race? Okay, well, there's a big uh, interstate contingent, of course, being one of the, the premier events on the uh, professional running circuit, not only in Victoria but Australia. Uh, Isaac Dunmore, who earlier has run the fastest semi-final, he's uh, from Queensland, but there's three South Australians in the final. Unfortunately, the fourth... South Australian just missed out was my runner, but I've uh, I formally coached one of the guys who's run, who won the semi. That's Dylan Hicks. So he ran second at Keelor last week. Luke Houlihan, who was uh, fourth in the Bay Sheffield, and uh, Jamari Sanders Malera. He's um they're both, they're all three of uh, I train locally in Adelaide, so they're all in the final. So it's a terrific final in terms of South Australia. Dunmore, the Queenslander, and uh, I think Dean Scarf from New South Wales also in the final. So there's five of the the six uh, in the so it's a it's a very strong interstate contingent here at Paran this year. Now, you've mentioned quite a few interstate runners there. Is there anything in particular about the Stonington Cup that draws these runners from interstate? Oh, well, obviously the prize money. It's the um, it's one of the bigger prizes. Uh, as I said before, the um, there's three uh, main gifts on the on the circuit. I guess you call the Grand Slam, the Bay Sheffield Stall Gift and uh, Bernie, Tasmania, South Australia and Victoria. And, uh, and then you've got Queen BN. And, and then the next tier down is, is, is Stonington. And that uh, and a lot of those athletes, you got, like Isaac Dunmore um, from Queensland and, and Chris Ennis Wong from South Australia, who I coach, who had a crack tonight but just got missed out in the, uh, the final. They're both, but they were in the Stall Gift final last year. Well, they've realised their, their stall dream's probably gone, so they've got to go settle for the next one down. And I think Isaac Dunmore... Oh, it looks the looks the goods tonight, but they there's been a couple of there's been a few others like Dean Scarf. He won a Queen Bien gift, and and uh, he's in the final tonight. Luke Houlihan was fourth in, in the Bay Sheffield, as I said before. But so, um, yeah, so the stand and the quality certainly goes up once you get here because of the the stand of the track, the conditions, and uh, and the prize money. Now, of course, you're not the only one to mention the, the conditions of the track tonight. So a great uh, pat on the back to our two curators in Dylan Reese jones and Matthew Harrison. The track looks sensational. Uh, what is, what's some of the feedback your athletes been giving you about this evening? Oh, it's, been, it's almost running on a carpet. It's a, it's a beautiful track to run on. The athletes are really enjoying the... Um, because uh, quite a lot of the tracks, as you understand, they're, they're football grounds converted. And when they're, when they're not the premier football grounds in the states like for for instance in, in adelaide we, have, we run a lot of grounds where they're amateur grounds or amateur football grounds so they're not looked after like the the pristine um afl and snfl uh, grounds so uh we don't get to run on too many really top class pristine surfaces like tonight so it's no doubt that's also contributed to the fast times we've seen tonight the 10 29 you don't you don't see those times um anywhere else but the good tracks now, of course, you being a familiar face is, is a lot to do with about your individual running. Uh, the 1985 Stall Gift winner, uh, Paul, then went on to win the Ringwood 400. So uh, also went on to, to, to win out here in, back in 91 and also run second uh, to a couple of good Olympians who went on to bigger and better things. But, Paul, you've had a really big history. Can you tell the audience a little bit about, uh, you know, the new leading into it and how you got into athletics and when did you finish running yourself? OK, well, I got into it because I, um, I needed a... I needed to find a yard for football, and I was playing in for. I used to play against Paran out here. I, I played for Brunswick in the VFA, and uh, I decided that I wanted to find a yard. So I um, went down to uh, the Essendon Professional Athletic Club and got tied up with a bloke called Fergie Speakman. And, and my first coach was a guy called Ian Hagger, was a member of that squad. And uh, and uh, the first couple of years was really only specifically for footy to try and find a yard, but it sort of took, overtook my 
my life in the finish. The, once I got a, uh, got involved in the professional foot running, it became a real desire. In fact, when I went to the first store gift in 1981 and saw George McNeil win, and he sang you know, Flower of Scotland on the day, so I, um, I really got sucked into it then. I, I just thought, this is fantastic and loved it. I went and saw Fergie Speakman. I said, what have I got to do, Fergie, to win the store gift? And he said, well, you've got to get the limit. You'll have to uh, get the limit a bit more. I said, well, I'll find a bit more. I'll get the limit. You find a bit more sort of thing. So we, so we just, it was a five-year plan. We had a crack in 85, and um, it was, I was only a once-off opportunity because of the, I had a fairly good mark at the time, so I was never going to get that mark again. So I uh, had a crack, and we were fortunate enough to win. I gave footy away for a, year, a couple of years to concentrate purely on the professional running, and then um, you know, I ran for 12 years all up. Won the store gift, won the 70 metres that year as well, which is the last time it's been done. Uh, won the Ringwood gift just before that, the 400 metre race, which is the only 400 metre Ringwood, 400 metre gift on the circuit. Um, and then came, then I changed coaches to Jim Bradley back at about 88, 89. And we, um, uh, that was the best thing I ever did because he got me up again and I ran second in the store gift in 91 to my stable mate. And I think it's only the second time that, a stables Quinella the store gift so it was a great opportunity for us to uh, to make a bit of history and Steve Brimmer came as you said uh, Olympian Commonwealth Games athlete Australian champion over 100 and 200 around a 10 28 for 100 he was he, um, he beat me that day and I was well, but um, I knew it knowing going into it that uh, yeah, I couldn't beat him at the marks because he was just too good so uh, it was good to know that I mean, if it, had I been another stable and gone to stall, I might have been the P and the one, you know, the really was, all the hopes of the stable were on, but in our particular stable, T. Brimmer came was the hope, all the hopes were on, and I was sort of second, I was sort of a backup plan in case something went wrong, and uh, Steve broke 12 three times electrically, which is the first time it had been done, so... Uh, after that, I had 12 years. I moved to Adelaide in 97, started coaching, coached for 16 years, um, won the coach of the year over there five times in a row and, and trained a Bay Sheffield winner and a few... Uh, I, had, I had, went for 10 years in a row with a Bay Sheffield finalist every year for 10 years, so which I think is a bit of a record over there and uh, and had a few Camden Classic win and won all the major gifts over there. So we've had a, a pretty good run. I'm down to about three runners now, and it's uh, so which is a nice little handy um, uh, number to look after. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's been terrific. Now, of course, for lay athletes like myself, and 100 metres could take me anywhere from 30 to 40 seconds, what's one key tip for the majority of us who are quite slow over the 100 that we could use to, to improve our running? Just get fit. It's a, the whole thing with our sport is this, the fitter you are, the more opportunities to run fast you know, present themselves. So just get, I think also if you can get into a good stable, uh, if, a, if a young, I mean, it's better to have three or four or five athletes all running fairly well because that competition at training brings you up as well so it's very important that you you get into a squad where it's positive you know, people are, are running well and yet that'll bring you up to run well as well so uh, yeah it's um, and it's a lot of discipline involved and just prepared to break sacrifice which a lot of you know obviously a lot of the athletes do so yeah now of course a, a sensational individual record and some successful coaching over the last six years so i wish you all the best for this evening uh, and for the next few months thank you paul oh, thanks very much enjoyed it we're now joined by John Henry and JH to his friends. So, John, thank you very much for your time. No worries. Now, of course, you're very familiar with the track, being the 1970 and 72 third place getter in the then known as the Paran Gift. What have you seen uh, the changes in the track over the last 30 to 40 years? Oh, the track's definitely got faster. It's very well uh, finished late, lately. And, uh, but it's always been a good track here at, uh, at Paran, you know. And still, back then, still getting a bit of interest from the community because, as you see behind us, a big crowd has rolled in tonight. There's a beautiful conditions and, and a lovely scenery here at Turak Park. But has much changed over the years in terms of the interest from the community? Uh, not a lot, not a lot. We used to get decent crowds back then too, but there, there was bigger crowds just following the running all together then. But uh, at least we know we, we were racing for nowhere near as much bloody money. I'll give you the mail. <laughs> Well, of course, we've stepped it up to a $15,000 shared purse for the, for the men and the women, which leads us into the Easter race down at Store, which has now got the increase up to $60,000 purse. So a fair amount of money for the athletes to aim for. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's, uh, I think the, uh, the stewards are going to have problems now with the women trying to sort out what they're doing. <laughs> so good luck to them. Now, of course, speaking of money, can you explain to the audience at home what your role tonight is and, and what brings you to, to Rack Park this evening? Oh, well, I'd... I train runners. Uh, I've got one of, one of the girls I train is in the final of the women's gift um, uh, and I'm also tied up with the bookmaking. 
which I, I have been for about 33 years and I've been in the sport. This is, this is me 52nd year, so a long time. And of course, who's our favourite for the men's and the women's final this evening? Well, Dylan Hicks is the favourite for the men's. He's, uh, well, it's very hard not to be an interstater because there's five interstate runners and one uh, Victorian in the final. But uh, I've got Dylan Hicks at fa as favourite at uh, around about a dollar eighty, and uh, at even money is uh, Isaac Dul Dunmill from Queensland, uh, who uh, was back to favourite a couple of times at store. Now, of course, not only is you, you had a successful individual career, but you had some individual success with some coaching. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your your most successful athlete? Oh, they, they've all they've all won a few few quid. Uh, we've won uh, in the last nine years probably a hundred and sixty odd races, I suppose. And um, dollar wise, probably three hundred and seventy thousand in that time. Uh, but runners like Matty Hargraves, Luke Stevens. Uh, um, a bloke who's uh, away at the time uh, called Brown um, and uh, anyway you go through them over the years they come and they go they uh, they put in a couple of years we win a few bob and we move on you know we're having a good season again this season we've won 15 races this season so far so a fantastic start to the season now of course just leading into the store gift how does the Stonington gift race uh, fit into the whole schedule side of things. Well, it's probably it's probably round about the well, I don't know about the third best in Victoria. In Victoria, like with ten grand first, there's a couple of others with fifteen grand, but they they aren't they only give eight grand uh, to the winner. Um, but in in the whole scheme of things, you you look at uh, there's stall, and then probably comes um, the Bay Sheffield in South Australia, and then Probably Queen Bianne, and uh, which, which I think is 18 grand for the men and, and women, and then probably here would be the, the next in line. Thank you so much, John, for, for your time this evening. I wish you all the best for the races this evening, and of course, I hope the money keeps rolling in for, for you and Jeff down on the corner, uh, and all the best for the rest of the year. Thanks, mate. We've got to eat tomorrow, you know.